Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with baked banana pudding. That's right, I am pretty sure I was a southerner in a previous life. And I'm not just basing that on my incredible biscuits or amazing fried chicken, but also based on my baked banana pudding game, which really does come out way better than it should for a Yankee. But anyway, I realize you're not here for my geographically based reincarnation theories. So let's just go ahead and get started with this very easy to make pudding base, which will begin by separating four large eggs, with our whites going into a mixing bowl and our yolks going into a saucepan. And if you want to get a little bit of the white in the yolk, that's fine. But please don't get any yolk into the white, because that can and will cause a problem when we whip our whites. So please be careful. And then once those are separated, we will continue on by adding a little touch of sugar to our yolks and a little bit of salt, as well as some all-purpose flour. And then we'll go ahead and pour in our milk, but not all of it, because a mixture like this is much easier to mix smooth if it's not too loose. So the best strategy here is just splash in about a quarter of it. And then once that's mixed in nice and smooth, we can pour in the rest. And that's it, once all our milk has been added, we can head to the stove, where we're gonna place this over medium heat, and we will cook it stirring until it thickens up. And while you can go by temperature here, we're not going to. We're just gonna go by look and feel. All right, the next Southern grandma that uses a thermometer for this will be the first. So what we're gonna do is just keep stirring, occasionally testing this with our finger. And as soon as it feels very hot to the touch, we're gonna to start really paying attention. Because once it does come up to temperature, it's gonna thicken up pretty quickly. And before you know it, your mixture is gonna look a little something like this, which is close, but still not quite there. So we will keep stirring and cooking for another minute or so, until we have something nice and thick like this. And that's it, once we've gotten it to this point, we'll remove it from the heat, and we will proceed to mix in the last few ingredients which will be a little bit of pure and real vanilla extract, as well as a tablespoon of banana liqueur, if you have it. If you don't, it's fine. And then we'll finish up with a chunk of cold butter, and then we'll take a whisk and give that a stir, and we'll keep stirring until that butter disappears. And that's it, the pudding part of this process is done. And we can set that aside and move on to slice our bananas, which must be very ripe. So make sure you're using bananas that look like this, that have lots of nice black markings on them, which are almost never sold like this. Okay, they're usually pretty green in the store. Okay, so if you're gonna make this tomorrow, make sure you buy your bananas last week. And then what we wanna do once these are peeled is cut them into about quarter inch slices, or of course, as thick as you want. I mean, you are after all the Cuba gooding of this pudding, and you're the one working the blade. So if you did wanna slice them a little thinner, that's fine. But I probably wouldn't go any thicker than this. But anyway, we'll go ahead and slice up three or four nice ripe bananas and then transfer them into a bowl and toss them with a little bit of freshly squeezed lemon juice. All right, not too much. We don't really want this tasting like lemon, but a teaspoon or so will add a little bit of acidity and I think help keep those bananas from discoloring. And that's it, once our bananas are prepped, we can move on to final assembly, which means transferring about a quarter of our pudding into the bottom of our baking dish and by the way, I'm gonna talk about baking dishes in the blog post, because traditionally down south they use a deeper, clear glass baking dish, which I don't have. But the good news is, anything that's oven safe, that will fit all our stuff, will work. But anyway, we'll spread the bottom with pudding, and then we'll top that with a layer of vanilla wafer cookies. And I'm actually using the mini size here, which I think are a little easier to fit in, but the regular size will work just fine. And by the way, some people even break these up and crumble them in but I'm going with one layer of uncrumbled minis. And then what we'll do once our pudding's been wafered is go ahead and top that with exactly one half of our bananas. And by exactly, I mean just get it close. And that's it, once our wafers have been bananaed, we will finish this first layer by spreading over one half of the remaining pudding. Oh, and by the way, you didn't hear this from me, but if you wanted to scatter over a handful of chocolate chips on this first layer, that would not be a bad idea if you like that combination of flavors. I mean, I love chocolate dipped bananas, but like many people find them extremely awkward to eat in public. So this would be a great way to get that same flavor profile without feeling like people are staring at you. But anyway, once that's been spread over, we'll go ahead and top that with a second layer of vanilla wafers. And for this second layer, I'm not gonna put quite as many cookies on, just so the cookies don't dominate the pudding. Okay, I wanna make sure this is very much banana forward. So I'm gonna place that second layer of cookies on as shown 
And then once that's set, we'll top it with the rest of our bananas. And then to finish this off, we'll spread over the rest of our pudding. And then what we're going to want to do to settle all this down after the last of our pudding has been spread over is give this thing the old tapa-tapa. And maybe a little shake shake But mostly an old tapa-tapa. And that will knock that pudding down into all those cracks and crevices. And that's it. Our base is done. And we can move on to make our meringue. And to do that, we will add a little pinch of cream of tartar to our egg whites. Or if you don't have that, a couple drops of lemon juice. And then we'll go ahead and start whipping these up on high speed. And as soon as our egg whites get foamy and look like this, we'll go ahead and sprinkle in a couple tablespoons of sugar, sort of gradually, a few teaspoons at a time. And that's it. Once that's been added, we'll simply keep whisking until we have some gorgeous, fairly well-defined, but not too stiff peaks. Okay, so we want some peaks that will sort of stand up and hold their shape. But we do not want these whites to get super stiff and dry. So for me, this is perfect right here. And then once those are set, we'll go ahead and spread that over our pudding, all the way to the edges. And then one tip to remember if you want a nice appearance once this is baked, is that once this is all spread out evenly, take a knife or spatula and try to create some ridges so the surface is not too smooth. All right, if it's smooth, you're gonna get an even browning, which still looks good, but you're not gonna get that gorgeous contrast that you will get if you have some darker spots here and there. So I really think we wanna to try to roughen up that surface a little bit, sort of like I'm doing here. And that's it, once we have that looking exactly like we want, it's ready to transfer into the center of a 400 degree oven for about seven to 10 minutes, or until our meringue is beautifully browned and hopefully looking something like this. And yes, that does look like a banana cream pie, which is sort of basically what this is, except better, in my humble and possibly formerly Southern opinion. And then once this beautiful pudding comes out of the oven, we have a major, major decision. Do we serve it warm like I'm doing here and like they definitely do down south? Or should we let it cool? At which point I think it actually tastes better. Okay, for me, once this is cooled, it tastes a little bit sweeter with a little more pronounced banana flavor. So you'll have to figure that out. But like I said, I'm serving this up warm, just like old Southern Chef John would have done back in the day. But anyway, warm or cool, we are talking about one extraordinarily delicious and comforting dessert. I mean, I love any and all pudding-based desserts, but this just might be my favorite. And besides our pudding and beautiful sweet ripe bananas, our formerly crispy vanilla wafers have softened up just the right amount to create this recipe signature and extremely comforting texture. Oh, and there's some shortcut recipes that call for using whipped topping instead of the meringue, which is not nearly the same thing especially if they use store-bought whipped topping, which is not even food. In fact, if you set that in front of me, I would look you right in the eye and say, bless your heart, which down south is not a compliment. So personally, I think this is much, much better baked with the meringue on top. But anyway, that's it. My take on southern style baked banana pudding. The stuff is fairly fast and easy to make and beautiful to look at. Not to mention one of those desserts that really warms you from the inside out. Whether you eat it warm or not, so whether you're an actual Southerner, or possibly former Southerner like me, or you just want to eat dessert like one, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. <laughs>